This is a regular pepperoni frozen the thin crust pizza. And this is a fathead pepperoni pizza. Definitely recommend the fathead pizza. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make it and how to meal prep it so you can have pizza six days a week like some people I know. Delicious. We will need cream cheese, shredded mozzarella cheese, now before you give me grief about using shredded mozzarella cheese, which I know has extra grams of carbs because they add the potato starch to it so it doesn't stick together, we're meal prepping. We want to make this fast. And also, this is the best solution. It's not melting. Almond flour, eggs, salt, and flour. Just kidding. Kick the lure of gluten out of the house Sorry, because, man. well, flour isn't exactly welcome in this recipe. You also need a vacuum seal bag, a hefty bag, or just a normal Ziploc bag. You also need parchment paper. Lots of it. This next step is important, so pay attention. Begin by pulling your parchment paper and sizing it with the Ziploc bag. Fold, align, and crease. Repeat this process five times. Size it with the bag again, making sure it's slightly smaller than the bag. Fold, crease, and using scissors, cut. This parchment paper can be used for toilet paper. Finding the crease, he uses a knife and cuts it safely in order not to cut his hand. He turns it around and performs the same action on the other side. You lean seven pieces of similar sized parchment paper. Set this aside because it's time to make the dough. Guts. Sorry. We need to melt the cream cheese, so we're gonna bring our pan in. He adds his cream cheese to the pan and sets it on low and sets it aside. While the cream cheese is melting, he cracks his egg and eggs. You can use alligator eggs, however, chicken eggs are much easier to obtain. He adds a teaspoon and a half of kosher salt and scrambles the eggs. Once the eggs are scrambled, he adds them to the almond flour and mixes until he has a nice, gumpy almond flour. He sets it aside and enjoys some coffee. Oh shit, the cream cheese. He brings his cream cheese back in, and it is well melted. Now you can melt the cheese in the microwave at 30 second intervals, but I find that making such a large quantity works better in a pan, and also because I don't have a microwave. Maybe you should get one. He adds his mozzarella cheese to the pan. And begins to mix. With the pan on medium heat, the cheese begins to melt. Slowly but surely, it begins to come together. When you can stretch the cheese like so, it's time to perform some stretches. This next part is exhausting. He lowers the heat on his pan and adds the almond flour mixture to his cheese and begins mixing. Grabbing the spatula by the head helps alleviate the torque on the handle. He mixes until the almond flour is evenly incorporated. Then, using the spatula, he cuts six pieces. These will be our six pizza doughs. He removes the burner and brings in one of the sheets of parchment paper. Grabbing one of the pieces of dough, he adds it. Puts a piece of parchment paper on top and then, using a rolling pin, a wine bottle or your grimy hands, he begins to roll it out. Not necessarily rolled, but actually just shaped. If the dough gets too tough, you can zap it in the microwave in intervals of 15 seconds. Be weary of cooking the eggs. If you make the dough too thin on one side, simply remove the top piece, fold it over, and try again. The dough is incredibly elastic. Once the dough has reached your desired size, remove the top piece of parchment paper. Using a fork, poke holes across the dough. 
This will alleviate any air pockets as the dough bakes, preventing it from rising. Be liberal. If you choose or forget to skip this step, you will have a cheese balloon when you pull this out of the oven. Then set it aside. Rinse and repeat with the remaining dough, continuing to stack on top of each other. When the last dough is complete, simply stack it. Put the last piece of parchment paper on top and insert into your bag. Gently, this is special. Make sure it's well aligned and simply slide it in. This is where pre-cutting your paper comes in handy. See how easy that was? Yorika. Seal the bag and put some tape on it. If you're forgetful, write what it is. Make sure it's good and stick it into the fridge or into the freezer. These will last, I don't know how long, because he eats them before it's over. And that is it. That is all you need to do. Just kidding, let's make some pizza. Preheat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And make sure there's no trumpets or Poe's X-Wing in your oven. Stretch the dough you just put in the fridge out of the fridge and open the bag. Peel the top dough off and place it onto a baking sheet. This is a tiny baking sheet. I highly recommend them. Replace the parchment paper on top back onto the top of the stack and put it back into the bag. Reseal the bag and set it aside. Make sure your dough is set on the pan. And into the preheated oven it goes. Set a timer for 12 minutes and walk away. In the meantime, prepare your toppings. Here, he is cutting pepperoni very thinly. Once the timer expires, remove your dough from the top. On a heat safe pad, place your baking sheet and add your toppings. Sour cream, black pepper, red pepper, cheese and pepperoni. You can also use marshmallows and chocolate, but that defeats the purpose. Put the pizza back into the oven for another 12 minutes. This is the hardest part, waiting. Time is up. Fetch your pizza from the oven. Look at this. Mm, that looks delicious. Tell me that doesn't look delicious. Once the pan is cooled, remove the pizza from the pan and then remove it from the parchment paper. With the magic of video, simply cut the pizza. Then, using your hands, put it onto a plate in various orders, making sure it's like a jigsaw puzzle, and if it doesn't, move the pieces around until it does, and enjoy. And that's how you make fathead pizza in 20 minutes. Thanks for watching, share, like, and subscribe, and until next time, eat well. Peace, nuts!